Hello, and welcome to my attempt at making my very own custom watercolour sketchbook. I'm going to be pretty much making this from scratch, so I needed to request some help from my good old friend Uncle Google. It's always there for us. And YouTube is absolutely full of them. Thank you for helping me on this journey, YouTube. It will not go to waste. So let's start at the beginning with the supplies. Welcome to my crinkly ass desk sheet. Say that five times fast. We will need some paper cut to size, two pieces of board, one for the front and back, an exacto knife and an awl, a ruler, a paper folder, a pencil, some sewing needles, linen thread or some kind of cord, crafters glue, scissors, and finally something to decorate your cover. Right, now that you know what supplies I'm going to be using, I'm going to show you some of my prep work. Since this is a custom sketchbook and I am totally winging it for my first time. Nothing makes a video more interesting when you don't know what you're doing, but you do it anyway, because fun. So I started out with some plain blue fabric and an embroidery hoop because I wanted a cool fabric embroidered cover for my sketchbook. And as you can see, this does not depict the end result. I will show you my two different results for this custom cover, but for now we'll just roll with it. So I started my embroidery, which was going to be some cool poofy little clouds. This took me a while, not gonna lie, and then I had to do it all over again for the other method, but we'll get to that. As for the board I traced on my fabric, I measured it just over 6 by 6 inches and cut it up. Board covers were cut, so I put them to the side. Now I needed some paper, and I decided to go with some Canson 300 GSM watercolor paper. So I measured the paper to 6 by 12 inches and cut them to size as well. Once I fold these into signatures, it fits perfectly with the cover. So the trimming and cutting was now over. Now I needed to prep all of the holes for how and where I was going to bind my sketchbook together. Firstly, I found the center of my 6x12 paper and folded it over. To get the crease nice and flat, I used a paper folder, which I do not regret. It's very satisfying. And I just repeated this process until all of my watercolor paper had been folded into signatures. Now that my sketchbook resembled an ice cream sandwich, it was time to measure where I was going to place the holes, which I marked down the fold on both sides at 1 inch, 3 inches, and 5 inches. I like the number 3, so I wanted 3 binding braids down the spine of my book. As for my cover boards, I measured the same spots, but a whole inch from the spine. So you can see I'm still marking where I'm going to be putting my holes at 1 inch, 3 inch, and 5 inch, but further on the inside of the board instead of on the outside like where the spine would be. I now wanted to prepare my embroidered cover for gluing so I put a layer of Mod Podge down on the back side of my embroidery. Now I made a little bit of a mistake of oversaturating it with glue but we'll come back to that in a bit. Moving on to the hole punching, I have myself an awl to poke the holes through. I did decide to stick with single signatures of paper just because it is 300 GSM watercolor paper and I really didn't want to have to do any more trimming. Signatures with more paper are like a folded piece of paper within another folded piece of paper. So one by one I punched my holes through at the markers of 1 inch, 3 inch and 5 inch. I repeated the exact same thing with the boards, poking the holes through where I had marked it earlier. With 12 signatures, 24 pages, and two cover boards ready to go, it was time to start gluing. You remember how I said I made the mistake of oversaturating the back of my embroidery with glue? Well, the fabric and the string had become pretty hard on the back, so it wasn't going to sit as flat as I liked. So to combat this, I had to get creative and place something soft and spongy underneath where I was going to stick down the embroidery. And, and all I had was string. <laughs> that's that's what, I, what I decided to use. I don't know why my dumbass didn't think that, you know, putting down lots and lots of glue would make everything less soft and bouncy, but never mind. This is just the first method, and I could have done it so much better. And then I continued making mistakes, like not cutting around my fabric. <laughs> I just left all of that excess on there while I was sticking it down, like why? As you can see, it's still very bouncy, but because of the oversaturation of glue in the fabric, it kind of had a crumply feel to it. And it's only now that I realize, oh yes, the excess fabric. Oh, 
golly gee gosh I need to cut that off <laughs> and it just made it so much more difficult to cut a nice straight line and to cut off the excess fabric on the corners at this point I was feeling pretty defeated about my cool embroidered cover but I wanted to see it to the end and glue it all down anyway even though I kind of knew it was a flop and I'd failed it <laughs> So unhappy with that result, we have now unlocked the special edition sewing method. So I had to do all the embroidery again, only this time I chose a checkered blue instead of the plain blue fabric. I just thought it might look a little bit cuter and I have no regrets. I think it looks absolutely adorable and I can't stop touching the little clouds. And here we are back at the beginning. I'm back to where I already was with two boards cut and prepped and two pieces of fabric, this time cut with a whole extra square on one side so that I can fold it in half and sew it together. Essentially we're going to make a sleeve for our board covers. So I've cut it so that there's a little bit of excess fabric around the outside and I place my board down and mark where I'm going to sew. So I get out some white upholstery thread and begin sewing from one mark to the other. Because this is checkered fabric it actually made it a lot easier to make sure that my lines were straight. I'm kind of impatient when it comes to sewing so you can probably do this much tighter and much better than what I did otherwise if you have a sewing machine then yeah I, I recommend you use that <laughs> so I sew both ends tie a knot leaving just one end unsewn so you should have something looking like this and then you turn it inside out and voila you have a sleeve for your cover now if you've marked it well taking into account the thickness of the board and everything like that then it should fit pretty tight. Now all we have to do is sew up the open end and try to make it look as neat as possible. So then you repeat the exact same thing on the other piece of fabric and if you've done embroidery like me remember to have your embroidery on the inside because you're going to be turning it inside out once your sewing is done if that makes any sense. Now with our fabric covers complete you can see how much better the second method looks in comparison to the glued method. It's softer, it's not crumply, doesn't smell like glue. <laughs> it feels and looks better overall so I would definitely go for the sewing method over the gluing if you were to do something similar to me. Okay it's been a long ass journey but we've finally reached the final step of binding. Oh my gosh it's taken me forever. So I've lined everything up and poked holes through the covers again and we're going to be starting with the bottom cover of the sketchbook and working our way up. So I grab out this really nice steel blue linen thread you want something a bit more sturdy to bind your book together so from what I read linen thread is good otherwise waxed cord is also an option and we're going to be starting at the first signature on the bottom of the sketchbook so you open up your signature and you push your needle through that first hole I'm going to be doing a Coptic style binding today as to me it seemed the easiest one to follow and it looks really pretty when it's complete I then took my needle underneath and through the hole in the cover and pull through I pull this thread as tight as I can without ripping anything and then I push my needle through the little loop I've created and I pull that all the way through until it's nice and tight. This is how it looks on the other side so again I'm just making sure everything's nice and tight without ripping anything and I go back in through that same hole in the signature and then it's on to the next hole. So again pull it through the hole, push your needle through the cover, wrap it around and push it through the loop you've created, pull it tight and back through the hole we came through. Now this time instead of going through the same hole we went through we're going to add a signature and go through that hole instead. This is what helps bind everything together and then I go through the next hole and repeat what I did on the first signature pushing it through the loop pulling it tight and going back 
through the same hole I'd gone through. Eventually you get into a rhythm and it stops being confusing, I swear. There are other videos on YouTube that can probably explain it or show it a lot better than how I can. Maybe don't look to me exactly for guidance on how to Coptic bind <laughs> because this was my first time. Also a little tip I learned, if you can't push it through the loop, just push it through the space between the signatures. It's a bit more fiddly, but it's easier than forcibly trying to push your needle through a really tight loop. After a lot of repetition, I'm onto my very, very last signature. And as you can see, after binding for about an hour, you can see the beautiful braided stitching down the spine of my sketchbook. I did make one mistake. I did end up ripping the paper just a smidge. I pulled the thread a bit tight in the wrong direction. We will just pretend that didn't happen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to bind the front cover. It's really hard to explain it, but I pull my needle through the top and then loop my thread and stick it back through the same signature. Again, this is my first time and I don't even know if I did the Coptic stitch right, <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure Sure that everything was attached so always go back into your previous signature or loop through your previous signatures stitch to make sure that everything just you know sticks together <laughs> so I tie a knot cut it off and we're done I made my very own custom embroidered sketchbook all on my own <laughs> cover is everything that I could have wanted and asked for. It's nice and soft and kind of spongy. Plus the sketchbook actually lays flat when I open it up, which is fantastic. All in all, I'm absolutely stoked with the result. As an illustrator and artist, sketchbooks are a very special tool to have, so it's kind of crazy to think I have my very own handmade one. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Anyway, you guys take it easy, stay real, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!